from the lower angle would be fear. From the higher angle or integrated angle, you have fearlessness. And where there is fearlessness, there is joyousness. Hmm? Life is terribly simple. Hmm? Its simplicity could astound you, but we make it complex. Hmm? So, with whatever tools we have in hand, we proceed through life, hmm? not thinking of the goal, hmm? not thinking of the goal, but just doing what we have to do. Hmm? If you have to reach, walk somewhere which is ten miles away, hmm? and you keep on thinking ten miles, ten miles, ten miles, you'll be tired hmm? even before you reach there. But if you only think of the steps you are taking, you will reach the ten miles distance hmm? without feeling tired. So, everything depends on thought processes. Now, how can thoughts be molded? Hmm? How can thoughts be molded so that we do not hmm? suffer as we do. And there is only one way, and that is spiritual practices. Hmm? Whereby automatically, automatically the thoughts don't bother us, we become observers. Hmm? I was giving an example to someone with whom I had a consultation. Here this young lady says, the thoughts keep on bothering me, it whirls and whirls and whirls in my mind. What must I do? Hmm? I say, the more you fight against them, the stronger would they become. Hmm? Try and observe those thoughts. Hmm? Think that you are sitting in a cinema and you are watching the screen. There is nothing you can do to alter what's happening on the screen. Hmm? Right. In the same way, let the thoughts pass in front of your mind huh? and watch them. And by watching them, they fade away. Because here, you are becoming a witness. Hmm? A witness to the happenings in the mind. And who is the witness to the happenings of the mind is the higher self within you. So here, very automatically and spontaneously, you are now functioning and are aware of the spiritual self that is there within you, the real doer, the real observer, the real essence. And then you regard all the movements of thought as a play. I had some fun with Charles at his home in Liverpool. He, he loves to smoke his Churchillian cigars, big things like that. Now, there he had a little device which you turn and it bores a hole in the cigar. Hmm? Fine. So I was looking at it, I was intrigued, and I start fiddling around. Hmm? <laughs> 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 so I start fiddling around with this little thing. Now, it has a, a droll type of effect. Now, as you turn it, you find this spiral just going up and up and up. Hmm? Continuous spiral. And then I showed Charles. I said, do you see the movement of the spiral? He says, yes. But do you notice something else? That in spite of the movement you observe, the whole thing is standing still. 
So there is that stillness within all and within everything. Hmm? Four, this very movement of your mind and everything else has its basis upon that stillness. So, the spiraling movement is a superimposition. Hmm? A superimposition upon that stillness. So now, when we start observing the thought processes, we will see its movement, but yet becoming the observer, Sakshi Bhava, hmm? becoming the observer, you do not feel the power of that movement. You are unshaken. You stand still. Then nothing affects you. Even in praise, you are still in tranquility. Even in blame, you are still in tranquility. So, the basis of good intentions, the basis of the various gradations of our awareness, wide or narrow, it is all still based upon that eternal stillness. All the turbulent waves of the ocean are based upon the calm that is deep down in the ocean. You see, depends on attitude, depends how we treat things, depends how we treat people. And that rebounds on us. Here, in the dining hall, I don't know if it was one of our meditators or from the meditator from the other group here, but while sitting down to dine, took the napkin and pressed it in, in his collar, like the Italians when they eat spaghetti. Huh? So the manager saw this, and the manager thought that this is not allowed here, this is not Italy, this is England, you know. You don't do that, you put the napkin on your lap, on the side or whatever. So he calls his assistant manager, he says, look, these people are very good customers of ours. You know, they come here twice a year, all the time and they must be looked after. Now this does not look nice, and that man must remove that napkin from his neck. Hmm? But you must be very tactful not to hurt his feelings. Hmm? So the assistant manager here is a clever fellow. So he went up, <laughs> so he went up to this person and says, Sir, what would you like? Shave or haircut? <laughs> <laughs> so it is our relationships, how we treat people, hmm? and the intention should always be such that we don't hurt anyone by word or deed. Hmm? Like this young fellow uh, saying the prayer, hmm? the Lord give us this day our daily bread. So a friend of his comes along, he says, so much effort praying every day for daily bread. Hmm? Why didn't you pray for a week's supply? <laughs> yeah? Why didn't you pray for a week's supply? So this fellow replies, so this fellow replies that if I pray for daily bread, then I'm assured I will get it fresh. <laughs> you see, there's motivation. Even in the prayer, there's motivation. He's not satisfied getting... <laughs> he's not satisfied getting the bread from the Lord. 
but yet he wants it fresh also. You see? Motivation. And yet so many things happen in the name of religion. Are we still having that concert tonight? Hmm? <laughs> you see, motivation, motivation is so important. And in the name of religion, so many things happen in the name of theology. Hmm? There was this bishop of London. Hmm? And he... Uh, walking in one of those busy streets of London, a little urchin bumped into him. And of course, the Bishop of London berated him, scolded him. Can't you see where you're going, type of thing. So this little urchin says, you are going to hell at half past six. Yes. So, and then the urchin ran away. So this Bishop of London started chasing him. But this big pot-bellied <laughs> bishop, bishops are always pot-bellied. <laughs> so as he was chasing this little urchin and turned the corner, he happened to meet the Bishop of Oxford. So the Bishop of Oxford asks the Bishop of London, this is, where are you rushing around? You know? He says, you know, I met this little urchin. And he says, I'm going to hell at half past six. Yeah. So the Bishop of Oxford says, don't be in such a hurry, you've still got an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, one thing is sure. You know, we should never put our noses you know, in other people's business. Hmm? So this one fellow was told, he says, uh, you know, people have a habit of putting their noses in my business. So his friend says, yes. But this fellow says, I don't mind because I'm a handkerchief manufacturer. <laughs> Good. I think uh, we have... Um, the night ahead of us, there is the concert, and after that I was told that there is a sort of a party or something. So, I'll cut it short today, until tomorrow morning. I'll still go for supper too. My niece must be hungry. Good.